I hope you guys are ready for this because I am. I have never been more ready for an article in my entire lifetime. The loneliness of a mid-level Vimmer. I use NeoVim. It's the professional programmer's text editor of choice. Facts. Facts. I'm already there. Except those poor, sad professionals who have to write languages that can only be written in special, hyper-bloated text editors. That's Java or C Sharp. NeoVim mentioned, using NeoVim is cool because it's incredibly powerful and flexible. You can edit text much faster than in any other environment. You never have to touch a mouse. And if you're willing to learn Lua, you can program it to do pretty much anything you want it. Yes, you want. And if you don't want to learn Lua, there's probably someone out there who's already made a plugin that does whatever you want anyways. Finally, using NeoVim makes you look cool. All of this is just facts. Hashtag facts. This is just... This is the factual statements upon factual statements. Someone get me a fax machine because I'm, I'm receiving something right now. But there is a downside to Vimming. It's a weird fringe interest. Okay, I, I wouldn't call it fringe, okay? Even among software developers who are already a weird fringe group. Okay, it's not a fringe of a fr This is an offensive statement for me, okay? I feel personally attacked right now. Most people who know what Vim is don't know how to use it, are scared of it, and are happy to keep it that way. People don't want to engage with it on any level. See all the jokes about exiting Vim, and a lot of this is because people who do use Vim are completely insufferable. <laughs> Dude, I got, I got wrecked. I'm glad he just didn't say my name. Thank you for not saying my name. Using Vim drives a wedge between you and everyone else you might work with. Absolutely. And it's the best. Nothing is better than when you have people that have never learned their environment, have never really used anything, and they come over and ask you a question, and you just like hit some data from a service, pipe it through JQ, grab a few arguments out, pipe it into something, open up Vim, jump, jump a couple things around. Oh, people are just like, how'd you do all that? It's just like, yo, dog, they're just like basic tools. What do you mean? They've been available. They're, they're, just, they're just there. What do you mean? Can you send that to me? Sure, I'll send that to you. Can you send me the command? It's not going to help you. Command's not going to help you. You know why? Because you don't even know what it does. But I'll send it to you. Pair a uh, pair of woe gramming. Once you start using Vim, if you try and pair program with someone who isn't familiar with it, then they won't be able to take control of the keyboard and participate. Good. I do not want to pair program. Step one, I don't pair program. Step two, if I pair program, I'm going to set up a server. We're going to tmux into it separate computers, and we will talk on the phone. That's what Big and Bot and I did. Uh, when you've been vimming for a while and have developed bizarre muscle memory and hyper abstract ways of navigating a code base, it becomes difficult to work even with other people who use Vim. I don't find that to be true. Most people use like Control P for opening files. All Vim motions are just already there, so you don't worry about Vim motions. As long as you can open files, jump to definition. Long as, uh, most most things have been get uh, in the NeoVim world. Most things are kind of like settled upon. Like GD jumps to definition in Vim, and if you have an LSP, it will use your LSP to jump to definition. GD GF opens up file. Like most Vim motions are already just kind of there, and that feels good. They have their own ways of doing things, which won't overlap with yours. The more interested you become in a topic, the tighter and less populated of a niche you sink into until eventually you are the only person in the world who can operate your text editor. Goals, man. Such goals right there. Goals right here. At the same time, when you sit down with someone who uses a normal text editor and try to work with him, you'll be utterly confused. Goals. Love it. Friction will be added where you don't expect it. In VS Code, I feel a huge disconnect between how I expect to navigate a code base and what is actually possible. And I spend half my brain power trying to prevent myself from hitting the caps lock key after every line I type. This is good. I'm, I'm loving this. This is so relatable because whenever I open up VS Code, my brain just looks at everything that's there. There's so much stuff. And then people are like, I don't want to customize, but I like, how do you look at all that crap? And they're like, oh, well, I just uh, customize the UI. And I'm like, oh, so you do customize. They're like, well, no, I don't customize like Vim. Okay. I open up a bunch of series of JSON files and look up them all on the internet. And I edit all of them inside my Vim setup so that my, or my VS Code setup. So my VS Code looks the exact way I want it to. And then I edit all the shortcuts I ever want. And they're all in a bunch of different uh, disparate JSON files. And there's no programming language that's very easy to get into. It's, it's the exact, it's totally different. It's like, nah, that sounds the exact same, buddy. You just chose JSON on as your language. I chose Lua. So by using Vim, I have, I think, increased my own productivity at the cost of alienating myself from everyone else. And while I'd still encourage you to use Vim, there is a genuine problem that you'll run into. Okay, fair. What to do about it? 
I have no idea. I used to think that everyone around me would see that NeoVim was the right way and that uh, they would gradually converge on using it. I hoped that I could go through life not changing my own behavior and that the world would change to suit me. Unfortunately, this has not turned out to be true. So here's a big thing that I've noticed is that when I pair program with somebody, either they're looking at my screen or I'm looking at their screen. Sharing keyboards and co-programming at the same time, I find to be such a weird activity. Here's my take on the whole situation. I think there's like two or three different paths you kind of want to go down. So when it comes to pair programming, this is what I like to see. I like to see one, someone sit down, navigate through the code base and show me things about it that are important for me to understand. Here's the high level thing. Part two, me go implement a change or try to figure out some things. Part three, me show change, change gets demolished by person who has all the context and then they rework it on their machine. I don't expect them to work on my machine just like I don't expect me to work on their machine. We're just simply different and that's okay. I want you to set up your machine the way you want it. I want your own personal development environment to be your own. I don't wanna use your machine, okay? I don't wanna use your machine. I think how you set up things is stupid and how I set up things is probably stupid to you. Stop trying to make fetch happen, okay? Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's ridiculous. So I would like to be able to pair program with people effectively, but I want to keep using NeoVim. Maybe I need to set aside one day a week where I will only code using very plain, boring, mouse-driven text editors to keep my skills sharp. I just don't think you have to program at the same time. Like, why are you trying to co-program? I just don't get that. Yes, I'm talking about C Sharp and Java. Yes, absolutely. Didn't spell my name right, but I'm okay with that, okay? Primgians, okay? Primgian is a little bit different, but yeah, that's me. That's me. Let's go. This is a very interesting thing, and I think it comes down to I don't come in to an expectation that I should use your computer, okay? I don't think you should have that expectation. I honestly just don't think you should have that expectation, especially in today's remote world. What are you doing? Are you like, sh you, you're not sharing computers, you're sharing screens. It's totally fine. Like develop a way not to do stuff like that. I just, I don't see the purpose of both programming at the same time. I don't think this article turned dumb. I think this article is a really good insight, which is how people approach problems. And I know there's a lot of people that like to co-program and people even argue that co-programming is better than single person, that you should always have two engineers on a single computer. Like that's a, like people take that to the maximum and they think it's, it's it, that, that is it. It's the best way to do it. I mean, I, I personally just disagree with it, but I, I don't expect to understand a single person's computer I approach ever for any reason. It's yours. Why would I know yours? Why should we ever have that as an expectation? It's a weird expectation to have. There's even body position to do real pro. Are you talking about spooning? Have you ever used JetBrains code with me? No, but that sounds interesting. 80s terminal users hate him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, still, so my machine is so riced up to my preferences that not even another Linux neckbeard can use it. Exactly. Just like, why, why expect this to happen? I think the better thing is just to figure out new ways to collaborate. And it really just comes down to how you do Like for me, it's, I think the best way to learn is not to have somebody else do it with you, even though that's like a fast track to get to the right answer. I think it's even better to learn, to fail, and discover a bunch of the context yourself. Because honestly, most hard things about programming is state and the manipulation of state. It's not the function itself. A lot of the, the function itself is usually pretty easy. It's like the entirety of how the state moves through the system, which just takes like hours of debugging for you to understand it. Serverless code editor, let's go. Pair programming is actually useful when two brains is better like investigating bugs and you have no clue where to start, but your friend does. Although once you start to get it running, your friend's looking through your code for two hours is just nuts. Yeah, like it's, again, that's like syncing. Like, hey, I don't really understand this. Can you kind of give me a high level, of, high level overview of what you're doing, where this bug could possibly be, where to start? start. They give you like the 15 minute talk. You go from there and then you just crush it, right? I don't know. Seems crazy. Anyways, I like, I really liked this article because it is true. If you don't use what everybody else uses, there is a, there is a level of being on the outside. But I would say that the inverse is, is that when someone sees someone using it, like the reason why I got totally into all of this is because I saw somebody else using it way better than me. And I thought I, I you know, I want to be way better. And so there's a benefit on both sides. You know, it wasn't until I saw someone else crush it. Some coding guy was one of the people that inspired me to get better at a lot of things. Some coding guy and Anders Backen at Netflix. Those are the two people that really inspired me to go way deeper. Yunong Zhao, he got me into Vim. I was using Vim with IntelliJ and he said, no, you got to do this. And he helped me set it up, kind of gave me the brief overview of some things. I really appreciated that. I used Vim for a while, then hopped around to VS Code, Emacs, Doom Max. I went all around. Then I went on my great uh, editor exploration that lasted for two and a half years. And then I went eventually back to NeoVim. Or back to Vim, then back to NeoVim. It was awesome. L plus ratio plus VS Code. Hey, I explored it all. Okay, I even spent like weeks on Atom. The name. 
the name. Is the Primagian. The Primgian. 